Hi everyone. Santa Catarina do Monte Sinai, a majestic Portuguese carrack, stood proudly adorned with 140 formidable guns, its hull launched into the waters of 1520. Weighing a sturdy 800 tons and stretching 38 meters in length with a breadth of 13 meters, this vessel, with a draft of 4 to 4.5 meters, was a marvel of its time. Crafted skillfully in the bustling port of Kochi, India around 1512, it bore the distinctive silhouette of two towering square-rigged masts, immortalized in a vivid painting often attributed to the renowned artist Joachim Patinier. In 1524, Santa Catarina do Monte Sinai earned the esteemed title of flagship under the command of Vasco da Gama during his ambitious third expedition to the Indian subcontinent. Yet, despite its illustrious service and grandeur, the fate of this storage ship remains shrouded in maritime mystery. As the vessel embarked on its homeward journey from the shores of India in April 1525, it vanished without a trace, leaving behind a tapestry of speculation and legend. According to one compelling rumor, the disgraced former captain of the Indian Naval Patrol, D. Luis de Menezes, brother of the fallen governor D. Duarte de Menezes, seized control in a daring mutiny. Allegedly, he set sail on a new course of piracy in the expansive waters of the Indian Ocean, forever altering the destiny of Santa Catarina do Monte Sinai. Alternatively, whispers suggest a different fate, a fateful encounter with French corsairs on the treacherous Atlantic crossing, between the Cape of Good Hope and the welcoming shores of continental Portugal. Whatever the truth may be, the allure of Santa Catarina do Monte Sinai persists, an enigmatic chapter in the annals of seafaring history. After the passing of King Manuel I in late 1521, his son and successor, King John III of Portugal, embarked on a sweeping reassessment of Portuguese governance abroad. Departing from the established influences of the Albuquerque faction, John III sought a new direction. Vasco da Gama emerged from political obscurity to become a pivotal advisor in the new regime's appointments and strategic decisions. Recognizing the pitfalls of fixating on Arabia and the failures of Menezes, John III opted to replace him with Vasco da Gama, trusting in the weight of his renowned name and his storied accomplishments to assert Portuguese authority in India and Russia in a new era of governance and policy. By royal decree in February 1524, John III conferred upon Vasco da Gama the prestigious title of Viceroy, making him only the second Portuguese governor to hold such a distinction. Concurrently, Vasco's son, Estevão da Gama, was appointed as Captain Major of the Sea of India, succeeding Duarte's brother, Luís de Menezes. As part of the arrangement, Gamma secured John III's commitment to appoint each of his sons sequentially as captains of Malacca. Embarking in April 1524 with a formidable fleet of 14 ships, Vasco da Gama chose the renowned Carac Santa Catarina do Monte Sinai as his flagship for its final voyage to India, accompanied by his sons Esteva and Paolo. The journey proved arduous, marked by the loss of four or five vessels along the way. Yet Vasco da Gama persevered, arriving in India in September amidst the challenges and uncertainties of the sea. Vasco da Gama immediately invoked his high vice-regent powers to impose a new order in Portuguese India. But da Gama contracted malaria not long after arriving, and died in the city of Cochin on Christmas Eve in 1524, three months after his arrival. De Gama's sons Estevão and Paulo immediately lost their posts and joined the returning fleet of early 1525. The tale of the French seizure, if indeed factual, would mark only the second instance of a Portuguese India ship falling prey to enemy hands, according to the 16th century chroniclers Gaspar Correa and Francisco de Andrada, whose accounts, though colorful, are tinged with the caution of hearsay. D. Luis de Menezes and brother of the disgraced governor D. Duarte de Menezes, engineered a mutiny and seized control of the ship, setting off with it for a career of piracy in the Indian Ocean. 
Both chroniclers recount how Luis de Menezes embarked aboard the Santa Catarina de Monte Sinai, while his brother, the deposed governor Duarte de Menezes, sailed on the São Jorge, under vigilant scrutiny to prevent any desperate dash for Castilian or French shores to evade justice in Portugal. After navigating past the Cape of Good Hope, Duarte halted at Table Bay to replenish supplies, urging his brother Luis to forge ahead to St. Helena, intending to join him there after the necessary delay. Yet, fate intervened with the fury of a tempest lashing the South African coast. When Duarte finally reached St. Helena, his heart sank at the absence of his brother's ship presuming it lost to the violent seas. In 1527, King John III dispatched Diogo Botelho Pereira aboard a Portuguese vessel to scour the rugged South African coastline, from the Cape of Good Hope to Cape Corinth, in a fervent quest for any vestige of Luis de Menezes's ill-fated voyage. Despite months of relentless searching, Diogo Botelho's expedition yielded no trace of the lost ship or its crew, leaving the mysteries of the sea to guard their secrets yet again. According to chroniclers Correa and Andrade, in 1536, Portuguese patrol captain Diogo de Silveira intercepted a French corsair off the coast of Portugal. During interrogation, the captured corsair confessed that his brother, also a pirate, had commandeered the ship of Luis de Menezes a decade earlier in the Atlantic. Allegedly, as the Portuguese vessel battled leaks, Luis surrendered without resistance to the French pirate. After transferring its valuable cargo, the pirate ordered the ship burned at sea, consigning its crew to a tragic end. This grim account, as recounted by Correa and Andrade, purportedly details the fate of the Santa Catarina de Monte Sinai. While it may seem improbable that such a heavily armed ship would capitulate so easily, it's important to consider the circumstances, laden with precious goods from India and compromised by leaks and the ravages of a tempest, the ship was perilously vulnerable at the moment of the French assault, potentially prompting Luis to yield without a struggle. Yet, there remains a possibility of confusion in the chronicles, that the roles were reversed. It might have been Duarte, the outgoing governor, who sailed aboard the larger Santa Catarina, while his brother Luis commanded the S. Jorge. If so, it was the S. Jorge that fell victim to the French Corsairs, while the Santa Catarina continued her voyage unscathed. Correo adds a tantalizing detail, during a stopover in Faro, Duarte, Sensing the king's displeasure and fearing the consequences awaiting him in Lisbon, discreetly transferred much of his personal treasure to the safekeeping of a female cousin in the port city. Thanks for watching.